Um, all right, then welcome everyone again. So since we have um, new um, people yeah, joining, um, just quickly um, kind of the setup. So A4 paper size, that's what I'm using. Of course, you're welcome to use the um, the bigger one. Yes, it's only that it may be like in two hours painting, uh, maybe difficult or you just finish later. That's also yeah how, how you prefer. Um, we are painting with acrylics. So what what colors I have? Um, then ochre and sienna. Yes, these ones are of course very good for all these autumn colors and then red with uh, brown, yeah, or like burnt umber. So these two mixing, and then uh, black for, of course, uh, contour lines. Um, yes, green, and then you can mix green with uh, with some yellow, or with some or with black to make the yeah the tone that you want. Some blue, yes. Um, can also try uh, uh, finding blue which you like, uh, for especially for maybe this kind of a little bit in between this layer, yeah. Because the one on top is kind of dark, and you can use almost yeah the fatal blue mixed with black, or also maybe with brown is better to mix it. So this one dark um, maybe doesn't play such a big role as kind of this blue that goes forward yeah but we'll we'll talk about it when we get closer and of course lots of white especially we're going to start yes with this bottom part so um yeah and i will use the lemon um yellow today so then i do this uh, we do this more um yeah uh, yellowish three and what else i have i have my yeah water paper towels and that's it, the brushes I use, very simple, nothing fancy. Yes, one thin for details. This one medium kind of, um, yes, yeah, so of course you choose brushes for the size of paper. Um, so it's then comfortable for you to get in the shape. Yeah, of. And everyone is very welcome to um, ask questions. If I rush, then just shout out and yeah, say slow down and that's that's all good. This, this everything is is welcome. Yeah, so we um, starting with the sketch. Of course, you go with the um, um, with pencil. Um, I go with the marker, yes, because otherwise you can't see the pencil on the screen. So and. So Van Gogh has placed his um, mulberry tree kind of really in the middle. Yes, it's really central composition. Um, there is a huge contrast, yes, between this ground. It's uh, very pale, light, and uh, the tree goes with darker, intense colors, and of course, intense sky. Yeah? Uh, so we can start simply placing yeah, the the three in the middle. Uh, so try to um, calculate that you have enough space for the tree. So if you don't go with the trunk, maybe too much. Um, uh, here on the left side, it is, um, it's kind of, it's not a part of the tree, it's a box. So I was reading the, reviews about the painting. So Van Gogh didn't include human, um, like no, no person there, but this box is a little bit like showing there is maybe a man uh, was there and maybe some field works are going to be done. So this, this strange thing is a box. Um, and yes, then we can get generally the shape of the tree. So not really worrying now about all these curvy lines, more kind of just getting into the corners of the, uh, 
Yeah, you can turn to one side, then can kind of stop and go again from the other side. So, so then you meet at some point, meaning it's not like you go around and then you don't have space or it's not symmetrical. Yeah? So it's try more kind of do it in a, in a jumpy way. Yeah? And um, from the point of view of um, of painting and self lies and you then notice that the ground um, Van Gogh has more straight and diagonal lines there. And the tree consists of uh, curvy lines. Yeah, so this is also the contrast made by Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so this painting was painted in his in the last year of his life. So 1889, when, when he was living in, um, yes, in the hospital in asylum in France. And then he would write letters to his brother, also telling about this painting, the tree. And I think he also felt kind of happy uh, with, uh, very happy with this work, like by himself. Uh, and generally as he was uh, emotionally unstable these days and um, the moment of three, he kind of felt um, it was the, the positive moment. Yeah. Um, when we did this general um, contour of three, we can move back to the, um, to the ground. Yeah, so maybe some lines, some lines of grass, yeah, it's the shadow. Yeah, it's also good. Yeah, when you do the sketch to jump around. So, of course, don't go into the details yet before you have everything. Because if you want to erase or move something, yeah, then it's um, then then you already got details, and then you kind of oh, you don't want to erase and yeah. so. I mean, it's, uh, I mentioned it because it's, it also happens with me a lot. And generally, um, I want tend sometimes to stick, like start painting an eye and, and then you realize, oh, it should have been, you know, position different. So there is some heel in front. Um, if let's say you are, uh, you use, um, you're watching the, in parallel, the Van Gogh's original, Yes, and then you notice some um, big strokes of him. Then, of course, at once you can mark them while you do the sketch. Yes, so um, yeah, it can can help you. Yeah. But it's also one should decide if if you're painting the copy with the aim you want to have it as Van Gogh had. Or it's for you. It's just um, yeah, inspiration. But in the end, you will have your own interpretation or feeling. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's not a must to have it identical to Van Gogh, but it's also not uh, prohibited. Let's say yeah. yeah and then um, then of course we can move if you're happy with. Yeah, the amount, how much ground you have and how big your tree is. So maybe the opposite, you wanna kind of widen a bit and yeah? then you just kind of add extra lines. Yeah? So, but if you're happy, then you we go inside and I would advise, let's say, um, if you have the original or yeah, just I'll show here, there are some um, light blue spots um, in, in this area of tree. So these are, let's say kind of, um, yeah, the sky, the air showing through. They're not much, but they're very nice. Yes, we will also emphasize them with the paint. So then it's good now to, 
to mark them um, more like um, uh, harder with the with the pencil so then you remember they're there um, because yes with acrylics we can um, we can cover um, yeah on top but when it comes to these light colors yeah like blue like yellow still it always looks nicer when it's straight on paper yeah so it means you plan your light areas and then you put them first and you kind of yeah save them um so and you take, take care not to go on top yeah so it's somewhere here on the left they're entering these kind of two bigger diagonals of light blue and then there are some round circles here uh, yeah, and somewhere here in the middle yeah. it's also generally if you let's say if you are outside and you want to paint a tree it's always a good advice to um, actually not to paint a tree but to paint an emptinesses between the branches um, then you'll get kind of nicer more the impressionist style um, yeah, so, it's, so this is a little bit this this trick painting the emptinesses in between. Yeah. yeah, also maybe some bit more here. Yeah, but those main ones that are light blue are here on mainly on the left. The rest ones, the, the blue is darker, then we will we'll manage it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, when you do the pencil sketch and if there are dark parts, Feel free also kind of to color with the with the pencil. Yeah, it it helps. Yeah. So you see, I I haven't done much of uh, let's say. Uh, pencil drawing for inside the tree. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, one can go and do more, a bit more detailed, but still more generic, maybe just marking some main directions. And yeah. like still, all these curvy black lines you do later in the end. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take your time to finish sketch. No rush. Yeah, so um, for, for those who are new, uh, we also have WhatsApp chat that we use. Um, so also during uh, the workshop, if you're not, uh, unsure, you can always do the, um, the quick photo and send me, yes, and then I can comment. Or in, in the end, of course, we share uh, how, how we did the results. It's always fun to see how, <laughs> how others did. Uh, and then, or of course, you can show on on your camera screen your result. That's yeah, but just so others know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and then of course we use the chat. Then we discuss during the week what suggestions or what wishes to paint yeah, the next time. Yeah, so give me a thumbs up when you're good with the sketch. Yeah, if, yeah good, Alessandra is, is ready. So yeah, Julie as well, Marina. Yeah, good, good, good. Okay. Yeah, Anna Marine. Yeah, really. Yes, good, good, good. So as usually, let's start with the white. Yes, yeah, so we will start with the ground. I take kind of lots of a bigger pile of white paint. And then I'll take the ochre. Yes. And then, of course, just um, like I can put straight away some uh, sienna as well. And yeah, I have questions. And I'll put. Yeah, I'll put. Yeah. 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 And I will put also some blue because at the bottom we have also yeah this um, white blue grayish things. So maybe actually I will use them. Hey, so I'm I'm using often this um, paints gray color that is. Um, yeah, when you put it in tents, it looks almost like black. But I prefer it to black because when you mix it with the white, then you get um, yeah, more, more blue, bluish grayish color. So sometimes, because um, you know, black sometimes kind of ruins, um, makes dirty a bit. So paints gray is a very nice. Uh, yeah, so just, um, and as usually a bigger, bigger amount of white and a little touch up of ochre. Yes, it's always good to go back, back and forth three times if it's not enough and to put straight away lots of uh, color into the white and then you, then it's hard to get it lighter. Yeah. So, and uh, so first my mix is this white with ochre, very light. Yes, and we just go creating base layer on the ground. Yeah, so this is, um, try to avoid also this, so there are like these two grayish lines on the left uh, and one a bit lighter, but more white, yeah, on the right side. So yeah, don't go with ochre there. But uh, the rest, so here at the bottom of the tree, and then okay, then we skip the shadow, and on the right side of the shadow, so there is also this ochre, yeah. And now we're putting, let's say, the lightest. It's like the base, and later we will add uh, more intense ochre touch-ups. Yeah? And uh, my brush is not really wet. Yeah, uh, the opposite kind of. I wet it, wet, make it wet, um, just as little, so it paints. But still, my paint is kind of yeah thick, and it covers yeah, nicely. So also this right corner, and then going a bit on top. Yeah, there is still a bit, yeah, already a bit more greenish. So maybe not till the tree. Yeah. And here in the middle, this area, so kind of on the right side of the tree, but on the grass, it looks more white. So just with leftovers of the mix that I had on my brush, but taking just pure white, then I can get kind of, um, even lighter than, than I was 
using the mouth. Okay. Okay, so they're somewhere there behind the tree. And generally it's also the aim kind of to get rid of empty spaces. So um, and that's why you start with the light color because then you can kind of can go almost all over also at the areas where they will be later darker yeah, but it's, uh, it's nice to so yes, and yeah, and um, in case you uh, know, like mixed up and put maybe yeah, the color somewhere not there. Still, you can wash sometimes. Yeah, if you're quick with some amount of water, you can take something out. Yeah, with with paper towel maybe also. It's, yeah. And after that, we will wash, wash the brush nicely and we will go for the gray color. Yeah, so we will continue, we will finish the, the ground. And yeah, I also usually suggest, so you wash your brush nicely in water and then still I wipe it with the paper towel because then, you know, when it gets stuck in where the metal part is, and then sometimes you can have the color moves them. And yes, so I will um, go now for grayish. Um, so that if it's um, you can use some blue, of course. Yes, and a little bit of. So let's say if you have this paints gray, it's kind of very nice. Yeah, of course you need it a tiny, tiny bit, like a millimeter, and then you have this grayish. If you don't have it, then blue um, with some black, and also of course very little blue, even less black, and then lots of white. Uh, also a nice way, actually, maybe instead of black, you can take actually brown, because blue mixed with brown, and then adding, adding lots of white, then you will get very nice gray color as well. Yeah? So, and then I go with this gray. So there are these two, two parts on the left side. And then the gray kind of goes also on top. Yeah, so as I said, we kind of try to, um, So somewhere um, there, the upper side can go even also a bit into this, um, yeah, maybe even a little bit in these diagonals. Yeah, but depends. If your grayish is not not very light, yeah, then um, check that maybe you better skip and do these diagonals that I mean on the tree yeah on the left side then just with the nicer like cleaner color so just with the blue yeah, and so it's there and Yes. And then if you, yeah, if you have this um, nice light blue, then we can also just some few touches to these um, sky openings inside the tree. Yeah, can make them even more because you remember the light color we can cover on top, no problem. So feel free, you know, not to kind of 
sit and study, okay, where exactly is this spot? Yeah, approximately can play around with this light blue spots. And then in the end, you will maybe leave not all of them and just, and then I go like this, I move to the other side of the tree, to the right side. And then there is also just behind the tree, yeah, uh, at the bottom, there is also light blue parts. And, and then the shadow is, of course, already a bit darker. Yeah? And for the shadow, of course, if you look original, it has these diagonal strokes and they're different. And uh, the front ones, they're almost black and then goes some blue and lighter gray. So then of course, what you do, you can, you take just the lightest color of those and you put it all, all over the shadow. And then later you come back and put on top the darker strokes, yeah? And I can call it also color the box maybe, because the box is also kind of grayish. Yes, and the tree itself is brown. Yeah? And, and then there is also this kind of, uh, you know, foreground uh, in the corner, right? In the corner of right side, there is this bluish, let's say kind of hill. Yeah, so we can also, since we are working with blue, let's, let's mark also these lines. Yeah, yeah and kind of the more brave you do the strokes, the brush strokes, the, the better it looks. Yeah, it's, uh, just no kind of mm -hmm. like one brave stroke, yeah, not going too much uh, around. Yeah. But of course, if you feel at the moment your brush is too, too big for these strokes, yeah, then um, can come back later when, when we move for more like smaller brush for details then. Yeah. Yeah, so now I also uh, use, since I did this darker blue, yeah, I also play around, see where I also have some maybe darker blue strokes here around. Yeah, but a little bit, not getting too much again into details, yeah, so. It's the same story that happens sometimes. Yeah. And then with this darker blue, I come back again to the left side. Yeah. There is also a bit some darker strokes, yeah. And um, at this moment, very loose, yeah. So don't worry, it's not precise or um, yeah, it's more kind of set setting the color. And so, um, yes, since we were working with blue, I suggest we make uh, a trunk with brown. Um, and then um, we go back again, maybe to, to the ground yeah, for the light parts, but setting the trunk uh, now is kind of nice, then we get a bit the shape of 
uh, of the painting. Otherwise, it's kind of yeah, playing too much with some un, unclear parts. And so um, you can take also straight just the burnt umber the way it is um, from the tube. You put it, and then uh, after it dries, then you can put, let's say, darker strokes um, yeah, on the, on the trunk, so. Because yeah, like the brown is, is actually not so dark, the one, the way one kind of um, see it. Um, yeah, and then in the tube. Yes, and again, if you see somewhere, you know, you did the trunk, if you see somewhere brown, I see maybe here on the right side, right, the corner. Yeah, and then I also use the situation that I've used lots of paint uh, for the trunk. And now I just using kind of leftovers what are now on my brush. So they're not very intense and they're, um, yeah. Um, because especially if it's some just corners of the painting that's uh, where you don't really want to put the accents. And then I leave this brush yeah, clean and um, I will move now then with the with the thin brush, so the one that is comfortable for you to do the yeah, the strokes. Yeah, and once again I repeat that at the bottom where the ground is, the strokes are straight and kind of diagonal, and then moving when we do, do the tree, then it's all the curvy. Yeah, so just to, and I see they're kind of nice yellow, so I will put also um, I think I'll put warmer so I think lemon yellow is very nice to use for the tree part but at the bottom I will mix then uh, ochre with the with a bit of warm yellow yeah? uh, maybe it depends uh, the difference there is like some difference, but of course, maybe not so yeah, dramatic if in case you use lemon there. Yeah. And, and what I do also to have a different, I can start, let's say, just with the pure yellow, um, do some strokes, then I mix it with some ochre, have a bit different, and then re repeat the strokes. Then I can have this game a bit of, yeah, that's the things are different. Uh, to have your brush painting the strokes, yes, uh, it means it, that it, can, it has to be wet, but not like uh, really wet that it, it's always floating. Yeah? So it's more important you have enough amount of paint, yeah? but it's not the dry brush technique that. I mentioned sometimes we use, yeah. And um, yeah, and then I play. So here, right by the trunk on the, on the left side, yeah, on both actually, yeah, both patterned. Yeah, here are these frontal parts, and they are all yeah, going diagonal. This hill has kind of strokes to the other side, yeah, this bluish that we marked with the blue lines so somewhere there in between I also put and then there is this part that we've marked like very very light so there also this yellow I just mixed quickly with some extra white and I do the strokes there but they're a bit lighter And um, so it, there's always different stages of painting. 
and sometimes um, especially when you do these lots of light pirates um, they start shining they become you know like good looking only once you add the dark pirates around yeah so no worries now yeah, it looks a bit more uh, not so excited but once we put the tree and all the stuff um, these light parts will kind of appear yeah but we need to make to make and keep them light yes and i kind of can play a bit all around this um all around the bottom yeah? and then then I can mix a bit with sienna. Yeah, I can do some strokes, and if you feel your mix with um, sorry, not sienna, ochre, yeah, or also sienna, it's, with yellow is too, kind of too intense. You can lower the intensity with white. Yeah, so it's more pale. Yeah, because then you don't have to create too much contrast. And then we continue playing with the strokes. Here and then the bottom. Yes, I continue. I kind of to do the strokes. I keep on jumping from the water, and uh, so I put my brush to the water, and then I put my brush into the pile of paint. Do a few strokes, and repeat. Yes, because otherwise the, the paint is over, of course, on the brush and it's not painting anymore. So, Yeah, and also you can use the, um, the quality of acrylics that they can be made, uh, you can make like a texture. Yes, and I think th this painting by Van Gogh, especially this one is painted really with um, huge strokes uh, with oil. So um, it's like even like 3D, I think. Feel free to, yeah. If you want to put also them. Yeah, we, we work a bit more on on this, but not so long that you already get tired and bored. Yeah, it's it's good to jump. Then you just leave this this phase and go for the tree, do something there, and then come back. Yeah, because the tree also has lots of going on, and it's also good. Kind of to leave it for a while, go to the other side of painting, and then uh, and then come back. Because of course it's impossible to to do just from from the first touch-ups. Yeah. yeah. So so there are some greens uh, at the bottom. Yeah, we will come back and fill them up once we're doing greens at. Of the tree. No? So I will move to the tree. Let me know if, if you're good with this or uh, I should wait or uh, it's, um, I mean if you don't tell me nothing I move but if you want me to wait then let me know. Um, I will change again from this thin brush from details. I will change again for this kind of medium as to do this uh, very light, bright yellow strokes inside the tree. Yeah? So can feel more yellow on your palette to have the strokes like not thin and transparent, but to have them 
yeah, sh like sure and brave, especially because later we will add so much other stuff. Yeah, we will keep on ending, adding ochre, sienna, brown. So of course your these bright yellow parts will be eaten up a bit. So it's better now to create them bigger. So like you stay on the safe side that later you will have them. Um, yeah, they will they will stay. So uh, here. So I see one huge yellow part. Yeah, on the left side of the trunk in the start there at the bottom. And there is one very nice shiny one at the top. Yeah. So yeah, my aim is to create something similar like Van Gogh. So like I follow where his positions are. Yeah? You can, of course, let's say you can use the same and say, okay, I go now with this bright yellow, but you put them maybe more, maybe different parts. Yes. And here on the right side of the tree, kind of lots of this bright yellow. Yeah. And this is the moment where already we're thinking curvy, curvy lines. Yes. Yeah, don't don't be sorry for paint, put more, yeah. um, put bigger strokes. Don't uh, yeah, don't try to be economical on paint at, at this moment. Yeah, there are of course some all these tips and tricks for but yeah. Yeah. Yes, and they're on top of the tree also. Yeah, they will look, of course, very contrast with the dark blue sky. Yeah. And also, so a part of these big strokes that are obvious can sit some like smaller touch-ups from yeah, time to time somewhere. Yeah, of course, they will add this, this brightness. And the next step, I would go uh, with uh, for ochre and sienna. So kind of already on your palette, you have here some mix. So just playing around, yeah? mix um, and maybe mix now some uh, sienna. So a bit more darker if you want, because like these also intensive strokes of the tree are more yeah, sienna wise. And then later, some spaces in between the tree, we can go back to ochre that is a bit lighter. Yeah? So now I go just directly to, to sienna. And let's say, yes, this, this branch on the left side, right on the left from the trunk, yeah, this, this it is like hanging, yeah, I, I sit those uh, also kind of lots of paint. Yeah. Bravely sit those those spots. Yeah. yeah, and no really worries about all these outlines. Yeah, later when, when we move for those, it all will become, yeah, will look nicer. So now it's more kind of sitting just spots. Mm. Yes, and go play around. So some of this um, are kind of a bit prolonging our uh, light, uh, bright yellow strokes that we have just put. So can move. Yeah. 
correction there. Yeah, if you find it too dark, kind of you can jump in between. Or her sienna. Yeah, also use this um, as I've mentioned. Yeah, when there is less paint on the brush, continue using it. So like this, you put lighter strokes. And then when you come back, you fill up again your brush. And then you go can go and to those parts of painting where it's more intense. Yeah. And then once again, when there is less paint, you just kind of put the color to the places where it's yeah, less. And um, so, of course, we're sitting now like specific strokes, but also like I put a touch with my brush, you know, put several strokes and then I can make my brush a bit more watery and just kind of blend it a bit. So then it helps me to cover just bigger area. Yes, and the paint becomes a bit more transparent. So it's also not, um, a danger, but it helps me to go a bit quicker in the meaning of uh, um, so the left side I see more green, yes, but still go and do some um, maybe uh, light ochre or sienna I mix there because then of course it's not only green, it's with ochre but just green is more, so. And again, once you get the feeling, you know, you got tired from one color or, yeah, then just wash your brush and I yeah, can change. Uh, we can change, I say for the green, because then it will help us cover kind of almost everything. And then we can um, move more to, to detailing. So the green, yeah, it's very nice color. It's somewhat olive green there. So, so depends if you have, let's say just a um, standard acrylic set and you have only one green then you can mix it with yellow yes then it becomes uh, this sunny green color yeah very fresh like uh, like a grass and then you can add a little bit of brown again always go slowly yeah a little tiny of brown mix it see how it behaves and um, yeah so and then you can get this shiny, like yeah, olive, like it's bright, but it's a bit, um, yeah, but very careful with the brown. Otherwise then you just need to kind of mix again because it will be hard to, yeah. And again, mix more because yeah, the amount of green we need is a lot. And then you know that 
when you take color directly from the tube, then it's not a problem. You, yeah, you take as much as you want. But when you do the mix, then the mix always comes a bit different. Yeah, and sometimes it's good because then you can have different, let's say, it, like at this moment would be good because still lots of different tones on the tree. So maybe now I've mixed my olive green a bit lighter, but the next mix, you know, when when the color is over on the palette and I need it more. Yeah, so yes, and then again, of course, it's safe, like staying on the safe side. Like I mix and I put lighter green now. And then uh, we'll play around adding darker green. Yeah, for, for the contrast, but kind of filling up now with the, the lighter strokes. Yeah. And patience. It takes time. It takes time to yeah, get get into the kind of level when, when you start being happy with, with the tree. Um, so. Yeah, but um, once we get those uh, black outlines, it will feel it looks nicer at once. So on the other side of the tree, there are also greens. Yeah, so where we put more, we put more offers till I get in there with some green lines. Ajanya? Yes, tell me. Uh, do you uh, on the tree? Do you tap, or I don't know how you call it, like yes. tap, or tap, or do you um, do you like draw? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Marina. It's a, it's a good question. So, yes, when I first get um, fill in my brush with paint, then first I do kind of strokes. Yeah, so I also look at the painting and see, okay, where I see the intense green and I sit with, you know, the paint with the stroke. Uh, and then later when it's already less paint on my brush, then I just kind of move my brush. So let's say I paint, yeah, a bit tapping if it, if I feel still it's too intense, the color, then I just tap. And then what I can do, I quickly, wash a little bit my brush so there is no much paint and can blend out a bit with water. So then I get like the area uh, a bit more covered. And then it's also maybe not too much this um, uh, points, yeah, pointing. So in the end, uh, the answer to your question is kind of mix of everything. Yeah, so- And when you, when you paint, like when you do a, Stroke, mm -hmm. stroke, yeah. Uh, how, like, not, not like in a straight line, right? Exactly. So let's say here I've, I've filled my brush. I have uh, more paint, and then kind of with the uh, not putting it flat, but I hold it more, let's say, vertical. Yeah, the um, like the sides maybe here on the bigger. So I don't hold it flat, like not parallel to paper, mm -hmm. but. I hold it vertical like this, and then just so with this side, I I can. Do I think you were turning because sure. me, my brush is completely different. My brush is like um, it's not like yours, which is like a square. Uh -huh. <laughs> but mine is like a yeah. Like yeah. A, but let me try. So your one is more like this, like um, exactly. Yes. And okay. Let let, let me try. Maybe this one also works. Let's what see. I do, I just turn like in circles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's a twist. Twist, so, exactly. I just, I just, 
<laughs> good, good, good. Exactly. Yeah, so when you want to set it, you, you twist. Yeah, it's. Or I just tap. With yes, the... tapping is also good uh, for, for some, let's say, areas. Yeah. Uh, but when you do too much tapping, then it starts to look a bit, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe like a, this children drawing when they, yeah, like tapping for the autumn tree. So still we, um, yeah, this, the, the twist is nicer. Um, yeah. I've tried now. Let me try with your type of brush. I'm curious how it works with this. Because I got, I'm so get used to my these two brushes I use all the time that it's fine. Then. Yeah, it's probably also because now I feel uh, the brush that you have, mm -hmm. it might be also a bit softer because yeah. maybe it's more watercolor brush. And then of course I feel it harder. Like this is my brush, yeah, in itself, um, it's more hard, so it's, it doesn't move. Mm -hmm. So the hair of the brush are not moving so much. Yeah. yeah, and then it's kind of, I feel it's easier. Yeah, now I also struggle a bit with this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always have the wrong brush. <laughs> Last yeah. time. <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah. I have to buy everything new. Don't forget to buy the the, the, the tape. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I actually brought you the, the masking tape as a gift to Hunter, oh, no. but um, <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marina always forgets to buy the masking tape because then you get this nice white frame with masking tape and it's um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay I get it. so shopping you see your, your album paper is over so now you can uh, is, spend is... some money in the art shop yeah <laughs> yeah so um but for example what i find it now with this type of brush that you have um what I like with acrylics, it's so let's say we've sipped now all these uh, strokes, yeah, but still we might have some emptinesses between. And then I like then with with acrylics, you can make them a bit more watery, like watercolors, and then just go all around in between. Yeah. And um, so kind of your strokes are staying the way they are. But with this watery, yeah, you kind of fill in. So, exactly. and, and then it's nice. Um, yeah, still be careful to keep those light blue spots yeah, um, where you can. Um, yeah, but so then it's kind of, we get rid of the... Uh, but still, of course, our tree looks light. And um, yeah, we will need to darken up a bit. Yeah. Okay, since I also I actually use, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I, I, I used already a darker green. I will try to make it a bit lighter because I think mine is very dark. Okay, yeah. Um, as a feeling, maybe also leave those dark green, like, yeah, don't put more uh, because still, yeah, um, yeah we will put this, like dark lines still one might have a feeling that yes i want to darken a bit the tree yes mm -hmm. um i mean it's, it's the whole kind of building up process and um yeah take a look uh, maybe it's not not so bad um what i wanted to mention since we did the green and it's also we are kind of on the light green side for now or marina moved to the light do a little bit at the at the bottom, yeah. So come back a bit to the to the ground, and there are these light green there in the in the back of the field, yes. So there are some greens, and there are some let's say areas, and also some strokes, yeah, of green like this grass. So then you might want to change for 
again for the more thin brush. And then do the, yes, and again, to do the, the thin stroke, your brush should be wet, but with enough amount of paint. Then it's easy, yeah, because with the dry brush, you will struggle, it will not paint, and um, then your brush stroke will be, be big, will be fat, yeah, but. Um, yeah, so it's a little bit the feeling, yeah, it comes like the more you paint, the more than you just later feel how much water is on your brush and what stroke you will get. Yeah, for example, now I know it will be a bit too watery, but I don't know, I feel kind of in a rush or no, we would have time. No rush. Yeah, so again, I leave the tree to rest. Yeah, I got a bit tired, come back to the to the ground. It looks now already a bit yeah, fresh and different. And do some green strokes there. Can mix also, um, yeah, like since the palette already we have all kind of there, can jump back to you know, ochre, sienna, or to repeat some, if they're missing some strokes of this. Yeah, and uh, do more strokes. So even if you, um, you, you look at the original it, and it doesn't seem and Van Gogh has lots of strokes there. Um, still kind of, otherwise it will look empty. And so feel free to play around with more. Yes, and again, so in some parts, let's say if you see the stroke, you can always, uh, if you go like at the same time, blend them out a bit with water. Mm -hmm. So let's say if you put them and it feels, yeah, they're a bit maybe too strong, too much, then just wet your brush and, and then you can, let's say, kind of blend them out. Yeah, that's, um, And after this, yeah, if you all say you're good, we can move to the, yeah, making these dark outlines. Yes, because it will also help unite the painting and have already the feeling like, ah, okay, that looks, um, no, uh, sorry, got wrong. We will do first the blue sky. And after the blue sky, we do these black outlines. Yeah, and then one can work uh, on, oh, just like already adding, improving, um, yes, because, of course, one can work. It's, it's all the question of how, um, how complicated you want your painting to be. Like it's a quick sketch or 
maybe you're planning a longer work. Uh, I mean, of course, if you're planning like a big canvas, then you don't think to finish it in two hours. You you work some part, then you take a rest, come back next day, and so on. Yeah, the blue, the blue, the blue, the blue. So I'm moving slowly to the blue. Um, yes. So again, try, um, you might even want to try your blue on some separate paper. Let's say to see um, how it looks, especially for this uh, light area on the right side. Yes, because it's very nice, it's very beautiful. Um, so you might kind of want to check apart so you don't create it too dark. And um, so. and also now using the blue. It can help you kind of outline a bit the tree. Um, yes. And also notice the direction, the strokes of Van Gogh. They're also going kind of diagonal. And yes, and no worries going a bit on top with your blue on top of your tree. Yeah, we, with all those dark strokes, uh, outlines later, it will. Yeah. Uh, which blue did you take? Yeah, so um, this is a bit unknown blue that I use, no name, but... Um, just try take ultramarine yes i think it will nice be nice for this lighter blue part and then um for the darker blue part then you can um you can just mix it with uh, with some brown maybe or black yes it just looks dark but um it, the blue should look beautiful yeah it should look let's say more clean and uh, it's nice it's also Kind of the part of, of course, the composition. And... In case um, your paints, because some, some acrylics are more thin, you know, in its structure. Um, and sometimes when you try to cover bigger areas, you just get the brush strokes, like the emptinesses. Yeah? Yeah. And it means like, just don't try to cover it from the first time. You, you will never reach, reach it, yeah? It's, um, it's just leaving it to dry, and then with with a second hand, it will um, it will cover. Yeah, so um, it's, it's uh, I always compare it like you paint the the walls in the room. Yeah, it's impossible to get it with the one go. So it's. Um, Well, I have moved a little bit to the black, not the black, but well, I use this paints gray. Yeah, it's um, if it's, you take intense, it looks dark. Yeah, so this there is this corner of the tree on top, the dark. Yeah, so we can start taking uh, the dark color, and it will already now help kind of unite. 
painting. Yeah, then you can switch also for thinner brush and you can make darker parts on the tree. If your blue is not dark enough, you can always add brown and it will yeah, give you nice, nice dark combination. Yeah. Yeah, so I do now also outlines on the trunk. And this is one of the favorite moments because you know once you have already your base colors done, then because um, then the painting starts looking already more finished and yes, and also where the shadow is can add some darker strokes. So there are some dark areas at, at the bottom of the tree, like at the upper part of trunk, but um, bottom of the leaves. And of course, this nice outline of this branch, this orange branch that is hanging. Mm -hmm. So it's like with those up outlines, I, I go, let's say, the ones that are really visible and clear, like you see of one box where they are. Yeah, so first you kind of can follow a bit and yeah, do the one like the ones that you know, okay, these are here uh, and then later already then you kind of just play a bit around and a bit more your style, just um, yeah, so also careful don't forget our light blue parts. Yeah, then of course can sit um I mean, sh you should sit some dark blue or black around them, around those um, light blue areas, but just careful not to eat them up too much with the, with the dark color. Because yeah? those are the ones um, And I imagine also there will be lots of areas where you want kind of go darkening up. And uh, the way I do it usually with the kind of having my acrylics in a bit more watery way. And then just, yeah, as I've mentioned earlier, sitting on top uh, this, let's say, watercolor. Uh, yeah, because like the because acrylics can behave as oils or as um, as um, watercolor. So. <laughs> Yeah, so again, can can play a little bit following Van Gogh's line, but then later you kind of just stop and just follow already your spots and um, just, let's say, 
like move around. Yeah, my brush is wet with paint and I move around. I leave the strokes. Just remember not to, yeah, not to make them like all around. Yeah, be choosing. Yeah, somewhere a bit more, somewhere less, uh, somewhere darker, and somewhere I continue on. Yes, and, the, and if it becomes too dark and can blend it always with water. Yeah, so again, I see the stroke again with this. Um, do a bit of also twist or yeah, depends how, how you thin brush. It's also, um, you know, usually with time you already know your brushes and yes. So also be careful not going just everywhere now with dark strokes, still try to yeah, decide. Okay, here a bit more. There are bigger big strokes, but then leave some also spaces for. Yes, there are also um, on the right side of the tree where the branches are, there are also some very nice dark blue emptinesses. Yeah, so if your, um, let's say tree still allows it to, um, yeah, so it's still light, you haven't darkened up too much yet with all those browns, then you can also get in with those. Yeah, so I'm just sitting some blue spots in between and yeah, and then in some moment you might want to feel you know uh, darken up a bit the sky yeah some parts yeah depends which which blue of course you've used. Um, Jenya, mm -hmm. is it normal that there's still white? Um, somewhere on the painting, you mean? Yeah, or should it be? Yeah, I mean, of course, there are probably some, yeah, I also have maybe some areas of, there is one, this reddish bush or something. I just didn't get there with the red color yet. I mean, you can make it brownish, but... But in the end, uh, like there should be no white spots actually, right? Well, in general, yes, of course. Even those very light, light parts, yeah. Um, but it also depends, meaning like, because the aim in the end is to have this contrast that your ground is this kind of pale light and then the top is uh, yeah, darkened. So it might mean kind of work a bit more on, on darkening if it's needed at all. Yeah? And if there are some parts that have white paper yeah, left, I mean, it's, it's also okay. It's not, um, there is no rule that you can't leave yeah, white, white paper. I think I'll fill it with the, 
uh, with this initial, be like this um, beige. Yeah, think, yeah, exactly, yes. Because sometimes, of course, this white can look, yeah, of course, too, too whitey. And... Nice, Marina is going yeah, already towards the <laughs> finish moment. Yeah, that's exactly like when you write, then you analyze generally what's uh, how it looks. Um, I'm happy with the tree, but I'm not happy with the bottom. <laughs> um, yes, it means just a bit more work mm -hmm. uh, to um, to add details. Huh? Um, when, when I remember when I was preparing this um, picture, uh, yeah, this drawing for the lesson, the same, I did the tree and then I remember I was coming back a lot to the to the field to the ground uh, even if it looks light and pale still i was kind of adding adding more strokes so it looks um... <laughs> Okay, there is this. Of course, you can make it brown. I just see it a bit more reddish. This bush with something, yeah, like this uh, on the right side. Yeah, so, um, and then, so I've mixed brown with a little bit of red. And then I can also come back with this. So what I have left in my brush can come back with this reddish brown, maybe on the tree. And then it will also help me darken it a bit. Yeah, since I still uh, I feel it was a bit maybe light yet. Yes, and also, so I, again, like to the question that had Marina, I put strokes, but in some moments, if I feel it looks, let's say, too strokey, then I just blend them out a bit with water. Yeah, and then it becomes just, um, I feel the color. So. Yeah, and of course, it's also already the moment to, uh, like sit back on your chair and try to see it from far away. Yes, uh, taking a picture also also helps. You see, when you see your drawing on on the phone, then at once it helps you to see like from far away. Yeah, because sometimes just from the chair it's hard. Yeah, you sit back. Okay, you have one meter distance, but it's not always enough to. Um, yeah, so I, sometimes I mentioned since as we are painting and I see also the screen that you see. So then it means I see my painting on a screen and it literally um, yeah, helps a lot because it looks so different. And in, in just a few seconds, I can analyze, okay, where I have too light, too dark, where I should uh, add a bit more. Yeah, so. And since the modern world, why not we can use the modern way of yes, and don't be afraid to darken your tree if needed. Yes, we've we have put kind of a nice set of light parts, let's say on the left side, the tree looks a bit darker. So Yes, and as I mentioned, your light parts will look light when you put the, the dark around. Yeah?
so just as um heads up for the for the next weeks um yeah since i'll be traveling i plan to um, take oil pastels with me so if you yeah, give me the green light that you also want to do oil pastels then i think i found very nice the so the ballerinas of the gown there is one a very nice also orangey blue and i think can be interesting to experiment with oil pastels and one of uh, of Monet, yeah. Also, uh, yeah. or you, uh, or then just two weeks rest if the acrylics is is what you are, yeah, aiming for. So. Yes. Yeah. So, for example, now looking at my tree, I feel. Maybe you also might feel you want to prolong a bit your branches. Yeah, so if, if it's dry, you can just put a thick amount of yeah, some light yellow or light blue somewhere, maybe. Yeah. You can... So like, I mean, like this, these light parts on the right, left side. All right, all right, all right. Yes, I'm of course very curious to see how you guys did. And how happy you are with your drawing. What, what we did last, last time we did the, yeah, the Hokusai. And uh, before that one, I remember Marina got very nice with this red butterflies, remember? <laughs> yeah, it was very like, wow. Yeah, I framed it. Uh-huh, nice. I put it in the hall entry. My oh. Actually, I have everything that we do here in the kitchen mm -hmm. in frames. Um, wow. I put a lot of them. The Chagall thing, the, the one from last year with the forest. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
Oh, the forest, I forgot what that was the forest. No, no, it was not a forest. It was like a lake. Not a lake, sorry, like a small river with a bridge. This, yeah, the Tibet. No, also, the Tibet also. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really have a lot, like my whole kitchen. I have one, two, three, four, five in the kitchen, two in the living room and one in the hallway. Oh, it's, uh, it makes me, of course, smile and yeah, <laughs> happy. <laughs> I mean, that, that you enjoy and that you like, yeah, your art that, um, and, and also we were, actually, mm -hmm, tell me. it looks better, it looks better when it's in a frame, no, really, like, uh, it looks way worse when it's on paper, but then when I frame it, and when it's like, uh, um, when I stop looking at it, and then after a few days, I like it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we, we've discussed it also previously, that you should, um, in general, any artwork you do, and even if you're not happy, don't hide it straight away. And the opposite, put it, yeah, let's say where you work, table or on the wall, it always feels different the other days. Yeah, it's, um, there is something. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and of course, very good comment from Marina that frame of course, yeah, makes it. And imagine if you, when you frame it like with Passepartout, yeah, with this uh, like professionally white. I will send you some pictures. Yes, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, of course, I'm already <laughs> waiting, excitingly. And from the distance, for example, when I sit uh, now on my, my couch, when I look at the Tibet thing, mm -hmm. um, from a distance, it looks really good. <laughs> Well, really, only when you look very, very close, you see that it's not perfect, but, but it looks really like professional. And when I look at it, I think, how was I able to do it? <laughs> but only because you, because of the class, I was, I was never going to be able to do it alone. Never say never. I mean, if... Uh... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what I just noted, I, I don't have patience and I, I need instructions. I cannot... But I also feel when I, when I notice, you know, during lessons, these instruction, instructions are really like in the start. I feel sometimes people like, oh, I don't know where to start. But then later, they, they don't even listen. They just already do, like, you get in into the process. That's true. It's somehow those first strokes or the first color to choose is the, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So in case like you paint by yourself, you know, just just start, just start with any, you know, uh, and then the process will will lead you. Yeah, but I need a voice in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I never tried by myself, but maybe I'll try. But I, I'm sure I will miss uh, some someone who's watching. <laughs> Waiting for the Marina shot. You're going to share it. Yeah. All right, getting, getting Marina's one. Oh no, Marine. Yeah, Marine one. Yay, not bad. All right, everyone, we can, I can. So for those who don't have WhatsApp in the group, can. Very fiery, Marine. You're on fire. Yes, it does. <laughs> Literally. Huh? Please. Right. <laughs> um, how you feel yourself about the. Uh, um, it's a bit uh, rough, but um, I think I'm lacking the mini pencil to have mm -hmm. very s small strokes, like very tiny strokes. Yes. They're a bit rough strokes. Mm -hmm. um, but I've got a very, very thin pencil, but it's still very thick lines, so I don't know what to do. 
uh, go to the shop. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but, the, but I mean, there's this very tiny, tiny, tiny pencil. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. So, yeah, you see, this is the one I use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it. okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I also have that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, one comment, just kind of that um, the first uh, bumped to, like your trunk looks a bit, bit like a vase, you know, the shape. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, kind of his, maybe like his bottom is a bit more rough, like more straight or something. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it, it's also fine. It, it's your like yeah, stylization, but. Uh, no, I think it's wrong. Yeah, that's right. I need to. Like, like a bit more sh corners. Yeah. Like. Um, yes. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. So then it can make, maybe the trunk will look more like. Yes. Um, More like a tree. Something like this, yeah. So, but um, yeah. So also, like all all comments that I make, it's of course you either you decide yourself if you put it to your painting. And also maybe this light uh, on the right side, it's a bit too light. It's a bit jumping out. Like just, I'm sure you already have on palette some grayish mix. So where this orange bush, and on the both sides of them, it's like too light. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah just kind of. I also actually did it on my painting. Like in the end, I put this a bit grayish, so just calm it down and have it more like light but grayish. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, <laughs> Marina, well, this is an artist emerging. No. It, it it also looks like a river that you have there. <laughs> Yay! Honestly, I I'm still I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, so when I look more closely, like like when I put my eyes closer, I like it more. Mm -hmm. But when I look oh, like with a distance, I feel like Marine said uh, it's very rough. Mm -hmm. And. It doesn't have these details, but it's because I also like my my pen my brush is really bad. Yeah. Um, but I like it more when I see those lines, like the black lines on the tree. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should add more of them. I don't know. Um, when you've mentioned yes, looking uh, close uh, and from far away, when I try to put far away, I for example your yellow on the ground. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a bit contradicting with the yellow on um, on the tree. They're kind of both bright, you yeah. know. So, um, but it's exactly you see it more when when it's far away. Because then I kind of I keep on watching both ground and tree. Yeah. Um, I have to add more uh, ochre on the bottom. I would add a bit more. Let's say. Add, maybe calm down those yellows on yeah. on the ground but yeah but see how it feels to you not to make it kind of um yeah too messy mm -hmm. but the three uh, i like it's like those bright spots of yellow and orange look um, yeah. Yeah. And but i really I, I really need a, a thin brush it's urgent <laughs> yeah. the, the the one thing it's just maybe from the like drawing point of view, um, this blue part that it's like a shadow of the tree, but like on your one, it looks like if it's all the river behind, you know? And, I thought it was the river. <laughs> and as if the, the tree doesn't have really a shadow. Um, Wait, but, but for me, this was not it. <gasps> I thought, I honestly thought it was the river. Oh, well, it's. <laughs> 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 I thought the shadow, Eugenia, the shadow for me was the same under, like directly under the tree, the black. The yes, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> but also leave it, leave it river. It's the amazing interpretation that I didn't see. I was, you know, um, all classical <laughs> tree shadow, but here is very nice. Yeah. So you can even maybe just add a little bit, yeah. maybe shadow under. The tree so keep your blue river it's very nice and if you want like maybe a bit black line under the trunk and mm. maybe on the side 
with but yeah so yeah i get it i get it yeah because in general it's also from the point like all objects have shadow um when they touch yeah so if i put a cup on the table and even if the light is really like 12 o'clock there still will be some blacky line yeah mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. our brains they perceive it this yeah. way yeah i'll put the shadow next to the river oh my god yeah. and now comes the masterpiece of anna yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you are secretly uh, hidden. Well, let me, I'll try, it's trying. So. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's, uh, there is, yes, now. Oh, amazing. A really oh, awesome field. I mean, even I didn't get that close the way you really managed them. Um, so, so. Mm -hmm. Marianne, you have uh, an artist. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's, um, wow, Anna. Oh, uh, thank you very much. But uh, it was the first time for me to, uh, uh, with a fungo. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't even, I, like, I have no comments, you know, to um it's all very cool M maybe the only thing like in general uh, sometimes maybe somewhere like prolonging a bit mm -hmm. branches a little bit too compact yes it looks like all very oval the tree so maybe just some separate making some prolongs can be both uh, either with some dark like curvy line or also with some can be yellowish, yeah. Just but also again, if you want, if it feels too. Yeah, yeah. I will. I will try to correct this. Yeah, it's uh, like you can notice. Yeah, the Van Gogh. He in original. He has also this kind of some ends of branches are going curvy out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and some are like really like going long somewhere. Yes. Wow. Alessandra, how's how's your one? We can we can take a look on the on the camera yeah. if you want. I, I'll try to lift it. Uh, or it's a bit I mean, of a mess. Work in progress. It, it will take time. <laughs> but yeah, that's a start. <gasps> hey, yay, good one. But yeah, are you painting on canvas? Um it's a uh, oil uh, oil paper. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. using oils. Good, good, good. Yeah, it looks very nice. So yeah, it's it needs, of course, yeah, a bit, bit more work in progress. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But a good start, totally, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll still, well, I, I messed up some areas that I didn't get at all. Me too, I, I thought it was a river that saved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and here I made a mess, so I'm, I'm going over. Yeah. Then let it dry and do the black outline. Mm -hmm. And are you painting with acrylics or with oils? Oils. Oh, well, that's, of course, it's, uh, it takes time more, yeah, of course. it's. Yeah, yeah, because I tried to do some outlines, but I'm making a mess as I know, wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, 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 I, if I would paint with oils, I would probably leave it dry. And when it's dry, then I come back, you know, uh, uh, for oils, uh, outlines, yeah? Yeah. Cause yeah, because I think it's great, like painting like alla prima, this kind. Like I understand it. <laughs> alla prima, but probably not everything. Exactly, exactly. Yes, I also like oils, but yeah, like when I paint by myself, and uh, yeah, because then I it's, it's longer time, not not in a two hour workshop because oils yeah. of course is uh, but great brave one you know to go for oils that's yeah i don't like acrylics i really hate them <laughs> <laughs> because they, they dry so fast and uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, when I can. <laughs> cool yeah nice one julie how are you doing there yes i can see <gasps> oh nice one Totally good. This orange and uh, so sky and the orange spots. Totally love it. Very nice. 
also this very nice feeling which orange and which blue, you know, to combine. It really looks like not to. Can you just maybe a little bit higher so I can see the field? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so the upper part is amazing. Yeah, the field depends. If you want, you can do a bit more, let's say, detailing or. Uh, yeah, maybe like this white area on the right side. Yeah, it looks a bit maybe empty, um, but, but nice. But your interpretation, Julie, of sky and like the the tree, um, yeah, totally artistic. I love it. It's like more pastel, right? Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Like it's a completely different interpretation. Oh, I love that we all guys do so. Um... Uh, so Marina, yes, I see you've added the shadow. Maybe some lines. Yes, but maybe it will look, I will show you now on my painting. So if you add the shadow, not only along the, the river, but actually a bit more like here. So look at my drawing now, a bit more maybe here, you see? Kind of okay. starting from the, Ah, yeah. The opposite course. side of the trunk and just a bit there. So it's it's um, uh, exactly where the bottom line of the tree is touching the ground. Exactly. And, and, and that, it doesn't have to be actually much. Yeah. Um, and then you can kind of unite it to your black stripe. And then yeah. I think it will look more... Um, because it's it's a bit there, kind of you have very light area there. Mm -hmm. That's why it feels a bit contrasty. Yeah. 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 yeah so um, yeah, because the shadow is also where. Um... Wow, guys! But Anna, I'm amazed. And uh, and and Marina, your spot looks a bit. Um, like it's it's decorated you know you have these kind of yeah those blue spots um and yellow it looks like very tree. and mine is on fire no so <laughs> marine tree someone uh, uh someone put the the lighter uh. <laughs> yay Cool, fun, Van Gogh. Yeah, Van Gogh is all Van Gogh is always my favorite to copy. It's you can never get bored with him. Um, I think the almond blossom is my, of course, top yeah. favorite. Yes, yes, yes. Alessandra is <laughs> he's agree with me. And yeah, but it's so difficult to copy Van Gogh, mm. like. Like it, I it always I tried like Starry Night I think like mm. three or four times always looks like a child work <laughs> always it's like come on <laughs> because the drawing like the sketch per se is not difficult for mm -hmm. Starry Night but painting it is like every time is like five year old work okay <laughs> try again I give up. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's probably, I have no idea because did Van Gogh, he did it a la prima or he still kind of were retouching it later? He, that one, I'm not sure. He was like painting mainly a la prima. He was crazy, so he was like just... <laughs> <laughs> but I think that one was a la prima because all the colors there are not mm. really blended. It's all like stippling, like... <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like sewing. If you look at the brush strokes, it's like if he was yes. sewing. It's a tiny mm -hmm. short. <laughs> totally, yes. Yeah, and with the oils, you, then you have to clean your brush all the time. Because once you come back, it, it's dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have like, yeah, a carpet of like tissues and <laughs> bye bye <laughs> jumper, <laughs> done. <laughs> Well, working with oils, that's, yeah, you have to. That's fine. I don't mind. Do this. Awesome, awesome. That's the fun part, making a mess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, en enjoying the, the process. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> I stopped the recording, but we can.